Hola, mis estudiantes. This lesson is going to be about division properties of exponents, section 7.4. I know that we've talked a lot about multiplying, and yes, here comes division. Our goals are that we can divide powers with the same base and that we can raise a quotient, aka a fraction of some sort, to a power. We're going to be using repeat multiplication again, and we're going to be using that to simplify quotients of powers with the same base. And we're going to do a couple things. We're going to expand the numerator and the denominator. And we're also going to divide out the common factors. Here's an example for us to look at. 4 to the 5th means that we are multiplying 4 times itself 5 times. And 4 to the 3rd means we have 3 of them. And we're going to cancel out the like terms. There's 3 sets of 4's that we can definitely get rid of. And that means we have two left, so we can write that as 4 to the second. Now, of course, you do not have to expand all the time. This is just to show you where the shortcut comes from. The shortcut is simply subtract the exponents. So 4 to the 5 minus 3 equals 4 to the second. So subtract the exponents is really important. To divide powers with the same base, we are going to subtract the exponents. And let's get to it. Our first example, x to the 5 halves divided by x to the second. We're going to take away the division and subtract the exponents. The reason we can do that is because we have the exact same base, which is x. And now we have a fraction minus a whole number. You know that in order to combine fractions, we must have the same denominator. So the 5 halves can stay the same but we'll make the next number have a denominator of 2 and that means what divided by 2 gives you 2? The answer is 4. 4 halves is the same thing as the whole number 2. So now they have the same denominator and we can just combine them by subtracting and that's going to give us 1 half. The next example is going to involve two variables. No worries though, just focus on the m's first. We're going to write m to the second minus 5, so 2 minus 5, times n to the fourth minus 3, so 4 minus 3. And you can also think about it this way. Do you see how this division bar looks like a subtraction sign? That's one way that I remember to myself. 2 minus 5, 4 minus 3. You can go in vertical vertically. Now, when we reduce these, it's going to be n to the negative third and n to the first. And hopefully you can remember that we can never have a negative exponent in our final answer. That means we need to take that and put it in the denominator. So we have 1 over m to the third times n. You don't need to put the 1 in the, or the, in the new, sorry, the exponent. The 1 does not need to be there. Last step, just multiply across. We get n over m to the third. If you still put the 1 in front or in the 1 in the exponent, it's not wrong, it's just unnecessary. So the simplified form is n over m to the third. I'd like to show you one more. k to the sixth times j to the second over k j to the fifth. Now, right here there's k. This k in the denominator does not have an exponent written, so we assume it's a 1. So let's go straight towards the solution. We have 6 minus 1 k to the 6 minus 1, and now we have 2 minus 5. So we have j to the 2 minus 5 power, k to the 5th, 6 minus 1 is 5, and j to the negative 3rd because 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Very last step, take the j to the 3rd and put it in the denominator. k to the 5th divided by j to the 3rd. Okay, here comes an application problem. We're going to use the property of dividing powers with the same base to divide numbers in scientific notation. We just talked about a scientific notation problem in the last video, and here comes another one because they are quite prevalent in real life. So same base, 
We're going to divide the powers because there is going to be division involved. So let's read this together. Population density describes the number of people per unit area. During one year, the population of Angola was 1.21 times 10 to the 7th people. The area of Angola is 4.81 times 10 to the 5th square miles. What was the population density of Angola that year? Population density just means how many people are in that specified area. So we're going to write the ratio of population to area. This is where this fraction is going to come from. So first of all, let's put the population on top, and that is conveniently the first number that they gave us. So we're going to have 1.21 times 10 to the seventh. And then on the bottom we're going to have the area, which is this number right here. So we have on the denominator 4.81 times 10 to the fifth. Now we have some numbers in front and we have some values that have a base 10. So let's combine like terms. The 1.21 and the 4.81 are just regular numbers, so let's put them together. And now, in this lesson, we are learning that instead of having a division bar for the same bases, we're just going to subtract the exponents. So we have 10 to the 7th minus 5. We'll keep the 1.21 divided by 4.2, 4.8. 8, 1, and now this term becomes 10 to the second, because 7 minus 5 is 2. Now let's divide the number in front, 1.21 divided by 4.81. That is approximately 0 0.252 times 10 to the second. Now if you can recall scientific notation, the decimal must be 1 over from the beginning. So that means the decimal should move over 1, so that means we have 2, 5, 2 times 10 to the first, and we might as well go for it and just move the decimal over one more, so we get approximately 25.2. So the population of Angola was about 25.2 people per square mile. Now we are going to use repeated multiplication to simplify a quotient raised to a power. So in this example we have x over y raised to the third. Just like in section 7.3, which was yesterday's material, we're going to share that exponent with everything inside the parentheses. So I'm actually getting ahead of myself, that is the shortcut. Um, before we get to that, we're going to rewrite x over y three times because of that three in the exponent. Now we're going to put them all with one fraction bar and as you can see we have x to the third over y to the third. So that is the background of how the shortcut works. The shortcut is that you share the three with the x and with the y and it's pretty quick when you do that. So that is the simplified version. Take a look at a couple examples right below. We have 3 fifths to the third, share the 3 with each, and simplify, so we get 27 over 125. Um, the middle one is just like the one we did, so I'll skip that one. And the very last one, a over b raised to the 1 half, simplifies to a to the 1 half over b to the 1 half. So again, we're just sharing that exponent with everything inside. Okay, example 3. What is the simplified form of z to the two-thirds divided by 5, all raised to the third power? The first thing that I'm going to do is rewrite this, but have the numerator and denominator both raised to the third. So the first thing that I'm doing is sharing that 3 with everything. Now, using our knowledge from the previous couple sections, when we raise a power to another power, we are multiplying, so 2 thirds times 3, 
And on the bottom, we'll keep the five thirds for now. The top, the threes cancel out conveniently. And if you don't believe me, just do six divided by three. That gives you two. Z to the second. And we might as well make it a 125. And we can't do anything else. There are positive exponents. There are no um, negative exponents. There's no zero exponents. There's nothing we can do to condense it so we know that we are done. And that is option D. Make sure you show the work here. I will not accept just the answer. One other small example, just in case you are interested, I want to show you real quickly before going on, if it'll let me. Come on. Okay. Four over x to the third raised to the second. Share the two with everything inside, so that means we have four to the second over x to the third times two. And that means we have 16 over x to the sixth, and that is far, as far as we can go. Okay, you may be thinking, why was I just mentioning negative exponents? Well, we're actually going to see some more right now. When you have a negative exponent, you need to fix that. And the shortcut is flip the fraction inside the parentheses, which just means taking the reciprocal. That's the more formal phrase. Flip, flip the fraction and then make the negative exponent become positive. So make sure you write down both of these steps. And flipping the fraction means the A and the B are going to trade places, so that means we have B over A, and now the negative N becomes a positive N. So again, flip the fraction and make the negative exponent become positive. Example 4. Here comes the negative exponents. First thing that I would like to do is get rid of that negative exponent in the outer exponent. Now you don't have to do this immediately, but I think this is the easiest approach. So let's go for it. This is the original. First thing I'm going to do is have the numerator and denominator switch places. So that means we have y to the fourth over 2x to the sixth. And now the exponent outside is a positive 3. And now we're going to share that 3 outside with everything inside. So that means we have y to the 4th raised to the 3rd. And we have 2x to the 6th raised to the 3rd. Now you know from last section we're going to share the 3 by multiplying. So we have y to the 4th times 3 over 2 to the 3rd, and x to the 6th times 3. So like I said before, we're sharing the 3. The number up top is y to the 12th. The number on the bottom is going to be 8x to the 18th. And that is our simplified form. There are no negatives involved. We are all good. y to the 12th divided by 8x to the 18th. In case you're interested in one more example, here it is. It's pretty quick. A over 5B raised to the negative second. First thing is have the 5B and the A trade places, make it a positive 2. Share that 2 with everything inside so we have 5 squared, B squared, A squared. Last thing, 5 squared is 25, B squared and A squared stay the same. That's your answer. Okay, that brings us to the end of this lesson. Feel free to go back and pause at any point. I encourage you to try the lesson check for this section 7.4. You guys really need to practice this stuff, otherwise it's going to go over your heads. It's just really difficult. Um, so I encourage you to practice these problems. Um, find some online to do if you need more. Ask me in class. I can give you more examples. And last thing I'd like to do is thank you for watching this video and listening if you are. Have a great day.